Welcome, welcome, welcome to School Board Chronicles. Class is now in session. This show is where we dive deep into the heart of the educational system here in Canada, exploring the intricacies of school board governance and the passionate individuals steering the ship at those boards. Today, we have a very special treat for our listeners and our viewers. Joining us all the way from the picturesque landscapes of Kamloops Thompson, British Columbia, is the esteemed trustee Joe Kang, a driving force behind the educational landscape of School District 73. Joe, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me today uh, as we venture into the realm of school board trustees across Canada. We have been mostly focusing on municipal leaders, but we should be focusing on the other level of government that often goes unrecognized, and that is school boards. And I want to start with you, our first guest on this new venture, with a very simple but basic question. Where did your sense of duty to serve your where did your sense of duty to serve your school board come from? Yeah, first off, uh, I want to say thank you, Chris, for even having me. Actually, a local uh, city councillor here in Kamloops, British Columbia, Nancy Beppel, had shared your link to your podcast. And um, I've been listening for the last couple of months, and she was just like, oh, wait, Chris was going to reach out to a couple of school trustees. And um, you were actually Cole Hickson as well on the school board here. Uh, should see if Chris wants to connect. So thank you for having me. Um, anyways, yeah, just a short introduction. My name is Joe Kang. I'm a school trustee here in Camels, British Columbia. Uh, this is my first term on the school board. I'm 25 years old. Uh, this was elected here in October. And to go back to your question, Chris, about, you know, what kind of made me want to step up into the role and be in the school board. To be honest, uh, I was never really into politics or never really understood local government until I took a poly class in university my first year. And it was during the last municipal election or civic election. And they were talking about mayor council. And there was always this category on the bottom uh, where it was you pick your school trustees. And I had no idea what a school trustee was at the time either. And uh, the more I dove into it and kind of started we had a couple assignments for that class as well. And I started to understand, you know, what exactly a school trustee does. And uh, this was back in 2018. And um, around 2022, the beginning of the year, um, I was talking to um, actually a very good friend of mine. His dad sits on the school or the city council here in Kamloops. And he was just like, hey, Joe, you've been kind of, uh, you know, flirting with this idea of the school board. And um, I think you should put your name in and I was like oh Bill I don't know like I don't think it's you know I'm only 24 at the time there's no way like anybody's gonna you know vote for a 24 year old on a school board um, but he was just like no that's actually one of the reasons you need to step up and you know put your name forward is you know having that voice on the school board having a 24 year old individual on the board that you know just recently graduated not too long ago from high school um, to bring that perspective and you know the school board um, as many other dis like school districts in, in the province after talking to a lot of other trustees uh, it's kind of been the same group of people that you know sit on the school board for a solid three four terms and there's not much change and you know after I started thinking and um, just consultations with my family and yeah, I think I was at a good time in my life and you know, I said, hey, why not? Let's throw my name in and uh, see where it goes. And, you know, we just came up on one year on October 15th, and it's uh, it's been a very good uh, journey so far. So there's a lot to unpack there. There is a lot to unpack there. But I want to start with the general statement that you made. You are relatively new to politics. You're a year into uh, elected office. But you're relatively new out of school as well. And I find this 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 part of the conversation fascinating when I was doing a little bit of research on you, because you're 24 when you get elected to the school board trustee position in SD 73. And you 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 are relatively a new face on that school board. I, I got to sort of ask the question, why? Why now? Because you could have waited four years, you could have uh, gotten your uh, got, sort of gotten a few years under your belt. But you said, because of what your conversation with your friend Bill, you need that perspective on the school board. So for you, mm -hmm. what was the idea about 
school boards for you? Was it just because you had just left high school and you were a graduate from university? Or was there some other underlying issue that you saw the school board not living up to what it should be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, a, that's an excellent question, Chris. And, you know, I can go a couple ways with that question. But, you know, um, we came out of a COVID era after 2022 when the civic election happened. And there was a lot of just from personal conversations with uh, residents uh, in Kamloops. And, you know, I still have a lot of family members and nieces and nephews in the school system. And I realized, um, you know, there was it was a different school. It was a different system now. And, you know, kids were coming back to, you know, a system where, you know, they're lacking a lot of social skills. They're lacking a lot of human connections. They're lacking a lot of, um, a lot of just general skills. And, you know, I didn't think I could change much at the school board level in terms of, you know, changing that ideology. But, you know, I really wanted to bring my thinking of how, how I see a successful school be run in today's generation. Um, and no, no, no hate or anything on any of the older trustees and all that stuff. But, um, you know, things have changed so much and, you know, people don't realize that it's not the same schooling as in, I just graduated in 2015. And um, myself, my thinking is there's, so many advancements that have happened in the school systems and um, I really wanted to provide the local residents of Kamloops the most up-to-date uh, school experience and I just think um, being someone you know of a younger age that would uh, would allow me to connect way better and understand at the base level what's so happening in the school system bring that to the board. We're going to talk about the school board in a few minutes, but I want to continue on you and your journey into this role now. I, I I picked up on another thing that you said in that introduction statement where school boards are not often thought about when elections roll around. They're like you said, they're at the bottom of the ballot. They're usually the ones at the bottom. You go, oh, I have to vote for someone at the school board. Well, you are active in that campaign because I went back and I searched your social media and you were active when you were door knocking, when you were out talking to people, was it hard to engage with people on the school board level and make school board issues important? Because you are a level of government that is very important to a lot of people, but we often forget about it when it comes to the day-to-day -day minutia of everything else in the world. Exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's awesome that you actually went back and had a look of, at my campaign. Um, you know, there was some comments made by other fellow city councillors and mayor uh, candidates that, you know, we, myself and another young candidate, Cole Hickson, were, you know, running as we were running for city council or mayor, we were at all events, we were, you know, we had our signs everywhere, we were trying to, you know, door knock, we were doing all we could, and um, most of the feedback we got from the public is we've actually never experienced anything like this from this, a school trustee uh, candidate, and, you know, um, and I honestly, I, I'm so thankful I did how I did things in my campaign. It just allowed me to reach out to so many people. And again, I think I educated a lot of people of what a school board is and what a school trustee's role is. And um, I'm really hoping that a lot of people this year actually um, were able to vote as a school board candidate because of the conversations I had with them. And, you know, with uh, at this time when we were running back in October 2022, as you know, still a pretty prevalent thing happening right now is the whole SOGI uh, educational curriculum stuff. So um, around our township, there was actually, it was a little bit of a chatter happening um, about this curriculum and about school boards and all that stuff. So it wasn't as um, surprising to people when I would go knock on their doors that, you know, I'm running for school board and they're like, oh yeah, I kind of have an idea of what you guys do. Um, and the conversations would start about this whole SOGI stuff. And and so it wasn't as like I was educating people. I think people, especially since the whole COVID era, um, are starting to get more involved in the school system and in their children's education and um, are aware of what school boards do. And as we are seeing in our school board meetings nowadays, too, is a lot more parents coming out and a lot more um, participation on that end. 
So just just for clarification for anyone who's listening to this and and people are asking what does SOGI mean? So for those who might not know, SOGI is sexual orientation, gender identity politics, which has been uh, talked about a lot uh, in the last few months across Canada and particularly I would say even in the United States. While we're probably going to be talking about that in the issue section and what's going on in the school board, I want to sort of end on sort of this general question. You've been in one year in this position now, and it's been probably an eye-opening experience for yourself alone because you get elected, a young guy, you get thrown into the deep end in some sense, and you are making decisions that are impacting schools across uh, Kamloops and Thompson which is in the sort of lower eastern part of British Columbia. I, I got to ask, what has what have you learned in this time? In the last year, what have you learned about yourself in the role as trustee that you wish you would have known prior to the election to make you a better trustee now? Mm-hmm. I think one, 100% and I say this answer, I get asked this a lot, is um, I kind of wish I understood the, uh, a little bit more of... Uh, how a board works <laughs> you know <laughs> myself back in October 2022 I thought you know this young kid Joe Kang I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this 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 and uh Chris to be honest that's not how <laughs> things work at the board level I learned very early on that um you know our board is made up of nine people and you need eight, eight teammates with you that are on the same page or not not exactly have the same views as you but are willing to work together to create the best experience for our kids so that was one thing I learned very early on is um, you know being able to work together as a team is a very important skill um, to have and you know that I think just if anybody wants to run from this full position or anything just doing a little research and seeing you know exactly how much uh, how much authority and things you have at the board level again I'm only one vote of nine so I need to have all my colleagues on my side if if there was things I want to push for so so you bring up a good point I know I said I was going to move to a next segment but you just said something that I want to pick up on because I think it's a fascinating conversation you are one of nine people around that table now you're never all nine of you are not going to agree a hundred percent of the time on every single issue. I guarantee that. Yeah. How is how important is it for particularly at that school board level where you sit when you're sitting around that table when you're sitting around that boardroom to have respect for your fellow trustees to ensure that they have the ability to say what they want. And you have to respect them enough to listen to them. Maybe you disagree with them. Maybe you agree with them. But you have to respect them enough to have that opinion. But the moment you leave that boardroom, no matter how the vote goes, no matter how that decision falls, you are still friends at the end of the day. And you're still doing it for the betterment of the kids who are in your school system. Yeah, exactly how you said it, Chris, was, um, you know, I'm I'm very thankful to be a part of the board. Uh, We had seven um, members come back from the previous board and again we've had many many discussions um on the school board table where you know my thinking was way outside what they were thinking um but at the end of the day we all once you know the the hammer hit the the stone and we were all um laughing and you know shaking hands and you know I'm very lucky to be a part of a board. I know this is not always the case in all um, politics and everyone's willing to do that, but it is very, very important that, you know, everyone should feel comfortable and be respected at that board level to see, say, and do what they want because they are voted in by the public and the public obviously has that um, trust in them and want their uh, positions and views heard. And, you know, as an elected official, you want to bring those views to the table. So, being able to be heard and not, you know, feeling disrespected or feeling like an outsider is very important. But on the flip side of that, because this, your level of government is very contentious right now. And I say that with respect because the decisions you make are impacting children. And I I know every decision is impacting children, whether it be federal, provincial, municipal, it's impacting children, but you really impact children on a Mm day-to-day basis with the decisions you make. Now, sometimes I'm assuming people will not agree with the way that you voted at that school board level. How much respect goes into play for you to listen to those people who, while they 
disagree with your vote, how they disagree with how you spend the budget on the school division, you have to respect them enough to give them their time to let them vent in some sense, but do it in a respectful manner. They're not yelling and screaming and calling you names. They're doing it respectfully. <laughs> Is that also an important part of the job? Yeah, and that's very important. And that's one of the comments I've heard um, from residents here in Kamloops is, you know, I am so open to hearing every side, you know. Um, again, I don't play the whole the school board politics. I get it. It uh, can get sticky, but I think everyone has the right and um, to say what they feel and how they feel. And, you know, as an elected official, I am obligated to hear and bring that side to the table, um, you know, one thing I really pride myself is ha having all my channels open, whether it be in person, um, via social media, via a Zoom call or phone call, um, to hear everyone. Like, I've never turned down a phone call. I've never turned down um, someone just because they, you know, may not be on the same page of thinking as me because I feel like their opinion is respected just as much as my opinion. And because we live in that democracy and um, everyone has that right. And, you know, I've seen other politicians, you know, kind of just shy away from people that they see that don't fit into their, into their line of things. Um, but myself personally, I think as an individual elected, I'm not affiliated with any party or anything. And um, I'm I think it's very important to hear every side, whether it could be out the craziest views, um, but still, you, um, I'm not saying that you ever hear crazy views, though, right, Joe? Like, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, no, that's no. not happening never, at the local never, level. Never, Chris. <laughs> I, I want to turn to the important part of this conversation now. And this, I want to preface it, as I do on the cross-border interviews, I want to preface this show, this, in, this part of the interview, by saying this. This is a conversation between the trustee and myself. This is not a motion of the board. This is not a direction of the board. This is not a policy of the board. This is the trustee's opinion and his opinion alone. I just want to make sure I put that on the table before people start yelling at you. And I apologize if I had to say that, but I want to. Uh, trustee, in your opinion, what do you see as the biggest issue facing SD73 right now as of com as of this conversation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and there's a couple of different problems. Or that trust to my mind. issue or issues. You can you can yeah. go one, you can yeah. go three, you can go five. Mm -hmm. But I think right now the biggest issue, you know, kind of facing School District 73 here in Camelot Thompson is the constraints on our buildings. We just don't have enough buildings for the amount of students we have in our district. Um, as I tell everyone, we are growing here in Camelot at almost one elementary school per year. And we have not built a new school in the last 30, 40 years. So we just got our first official announcement for a new school um, out in Pineview, an elementary school. And this is one of the first announcements in a very, very long time for our community. But that's been something that we've been crying for decades here in Camels, even when I was still in elementary and high school, just the vast amount of people in our hall, kids in our hallways, it's, it's, it's not good. And um, that's something I hear almost daily, Chris, is, you know, my kid's school is too packed. You know, they're not able to participate in XXX because there's just too many people or there's just too many resources. There's not enough resources. And, and, and I'm very excited for the future because we are working with the provincial government in BC and, you know, just getting this announcement for a new elementary school. It's uh, on the right page, but we have a long list of wants here in Kamloops of where we need new schools, we need a high school and getting those are gonna be the, the biggest issue in my mind in the next coming three years. So I'm, I'm gonna sort of poke the bear a little bit here if you don't mind, because I've gotta, yeah. gotta, 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 gotta put this on the record. School board school boards are responsible for what happens in the schools. The provincial mm -hmm. government is, is responsible for the building of the schools. Now mm -hmm. you can't go and build a five to ten million dollar school anytime you want. You have to wait for the provincial government to come to the table, and even the municipal government to come to the table. So, in the short term, what does the school division have to do to alleviate some of these issues while understanding that 
It's not happening tomorrow. It's not happening four years from now. One new school in 10 years, if if you're telling me what is right, which I, I, I think you are, that's kind of embarrassing. And I'm I'm going to say that, in my opinion, that's kind of embarrassing, particularly as you are growing at the speed you are. So what mm-hmm. do you need to do as the board, as the trustee, to ensure that this doesn't continue to happen? Mm-hmm. And again, I... Uh it's all valid points. What you just said, Chris is, you know, being one of the first announcements in a very, very long time for the city of Kamloops. It's, uh, it's, it's nice to have, but it's not something um, it should have been done a few years ago, in my opinion. But, you know, as a board of education, uh, we actually have a very strong relationship with the provincial government and the Minister of Education and Child Care at this time, Rachana Singh. Uh, she, when she actually got appointed uh, into her position, her first official visit was actually here in Kamloops. Yeah. And we were able to take her on a, on a tour of a high school and kind of actually sit down one-on-one with her and kind of illustrate, you know, what we're needing at the, at the, at the speed of we're growing and how, what we need to, you know, meet the demand. And as you said, it's, it's not something I wish, I wish a school cost five, $10 million. <laughs> they actually go uh, like a cheap school is probably like 60 to 70 million. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's um, a substantial amount of the government's budget and they got to, you know, unfortunately politics play a very big factor in where schools are placed. And you don't what... say Joe, <laughs> this mind blowing right now, mind blowing. Yeah, but um, but I gotta give kudos to like even our parents, our, our district uh, parent uh, advisory committee here in Kamloops. They're very active and always reaching out to the government and you know illustrating you know why we deserve a school and why we need a school. And advocacy, I think, is the number one thing as a board of education we need to do. Uh, the second part of your question, with short term, what we're doing right now for um, to relieve some of these. Uh, I hate saying this, but um, we have portables in a lot of our <laughs> elementary and high school. I grew up and, living in portables, not gr- living, yeah. but I, my grade five through 10, I think, was all in portables. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I really honestly don't like when kids are in portables for their education. I like when uh, everyone's be able to be in one building as a school community. Uh, you know, just some conversations I've had with kids at, uh, at a high school and middle school level is that they just feel like they're they're part of the school, but they're kind of not part of the school. They're, you know, they unfortunately have to go and walk over to another building, and um, it might be a little bit of a hassle. But I, I like I like when everyone's in the same building. But just at the rate we're growing at, it seems like we just keep adding portable and portable and <laughs> building so, camps and portable. While while you're growing at the pace that you are, and that and it's it's I I don't want to say it's sad, but it's the reality that you currently live under. Does this affect your students? Does it affect the students that are going to the schools, uh, the schools in your district? And if it is, how do you alleviate some of those pressures to make sure that the students are getting the best education and have the best adequate step forward? So when they do leave the school system, they go off to college, go off to university, go off to the trades, go off to just doing what they want to do. And they are put, they're getting their best foot forward within the school uh, district today until these schools are built. Yeah, and my number one goal with every student, rather it be Johnny number one to Sam number two, is I don't care where what their background is, um, what ethnicity, what anywhere, they all get the equal opportunity. And you make a valid point when there are space constraints and you know schools that are at very high capacities, kids aren't going to get the same opportunity as say um, as Johnny at another school. And it's un- it's an unfortunate reality and I wish I had a clear and decisive answer for you Chris but it it some kids are being left out of some opportunity just because of that and you know they may not be able to take um, a class at one of our schools just because we don't have the resources or the uh, the capacity Um, you know our district does really pride itself on giving every kid the opportunity to take whatever they want and be part of it Um, but again with these constraints and it's uh it's neat I say one side, but then we have a lot of rural schools in our 
um, school district as well because we are Campbell's and the Thompson Regional District. And a lot of these kids in the rural schools are sometimes not, and then we've heard at the board level, aren't given the same opportunities as kids in, say, the city of Campbell's just because of their distance and where they are and, you know, the time of year and travel. And I really wish every single kid from A to Z was able to get the same education opportunities, the same um, extracurricular opportunities. But again, it, that's not possible without uh, resources, money, time, uh, so space and all that. You bring up a very good question, and I'm going to sort of merge two segments here, this segment and the last one. You've been elected to the board to make decisions for the entire school district mm -hmm. and that means Kamloops which you are elected to if I'm not mistaken you were elected yeah. in the area of the city mm -hmm. but you represent Kamloops and Thompson and you can't just look at the Kamloops uh, schools you have to look at the Kamloops and Thompson cities uh, to, uh Kamloops and Thompson schools yeah how do you balance that because mm -hmm. you say politics comes into play about where schools are built which is true which is understandable but you are now playing politics of where does the funding go where do the resources go? So how do you balance to make sure you are following through on your pledge of making sure everyone does have that opportunity to thrive and get the best education that they get? Mm -hmm. And with this question, I got to first off, just give a big kudos to our staff at the school district level. You know, they make our job very, uh, very not simpler, but much uh, easier to work around and um, get a better view at because a lot of our or even our superintendent all the way till our principals are able to get us this data at the at the school board level again i'm very lucky um my day job outside the school board actually i work for the thompson nicola regional district local government so which deals with uh, a lot of the rural communities around kamloops um, and i'm a community services coordinator there so i'm uh, provide services such as community parks, community halls, cemeteries and stuff like that in the rural areas. And so I'm actually in these rural communities quite a bit and uh, have a okay understanding of how things are happening in these rural. So uh, on our board, we have nine uh, school trustees and five of them are elected here in Camelot and we have four rural trustees from around the area. And um, again, understanding the dynamics in these areas are very important because as you say, Kamloops is the large population, but we are not just dealing with Kamloops on this board level. We are dealing with the whole district. And uh, a lot of these, all our rural trustees are very uh, community oriented and have a very good idea. And I, I really rely in, on their information and their, honestly, their passion for the community. And they certainly bring it to the board level and make sure the voices are heard for these rural areas. And again, just, um, being in the rural area myself in my day job, I uh, have a little bit of an idea what, how things and dynamics are playing out in these smaller towns or townships and unincorporated areas. Um, I want to end on one last question before I turn to my uh, next one. I want to ask a very important question. Is your school district set up for the next five years? Like, it, it, are you I know growth is going to happen people are going to continue having kids and they're going to need to go to schools and your schools are going to be the local ones that they go to but besides that growth issue or is the school district set up for the future and not just for the here and now because you talked about how when you left school it's completely different from when you're looking at it now if you're going 10 years from now and going is it going to be completely different than we are now are we are you putting in the steps now to ensure that there's technology in place that there's resources in place that the future kids of tomorrow will be better served than potentially you were when you were going through the school system mm -hmm. Yeah, and I get very excited when I get this question is that well, what is the future of your school district and how, how are things looking for the next five years and coming in last year on the school district, they were actually just on the previous board was just on uh, finishing up on a five year uh, strategic plan for the school district, uh, which we were able to, I think it was adopted right before we got elected in. And this plan uh, is when I say it's one of the best strategic plans I've seen it's um, and I've seen a lot of strategic plans just with my um, different jobs and stuff. Uh, this was a very well thought out strategic plan that took into factor almost, I'd say everything. Um, our superintendent and the senior staff at that time literally 
went from all, from parents all the way to grandparents to community leaders, um, even like uh, community like city council, mayor, all the way down to the students. And there, I know it's uh, if you're ever bored there, we have a little video on our school district level or school district website that has our five year strategic plan. And a lot of this plan is based off of uh, indigenous um, learning and uh, cultural values. Uh, which uh, we here in Kamloops uh, take big pride in um, having these relationships with our local uh, First Nations. Um, as you know, you're probably aware of uh, a few years now, the 215 missing uh, children that were discovered here in Kamloops, BC. So our relationship with the Kamloops and the other First Nations in our school districts are very important. And our strategic plan really reflects that. And uh, just one other thing to add on to that is that we're very thankful on our school board that we're, we have an individual named Diane Jules who um, is a rural trustee, but she actually sits, uh, she previously sat on um, First Nation Council and Tribes. And so she is um, based out of Little Adams Indian Band, I believe. And she brings this First Nations perspective and Indigenous um, thinking and all their stuff to the school board level at itself. And she's always very, very um, outspoken and willing to, and and I, I love when every time she speaks up and gives us a, even a small lesson on why things are done like this or they should be done like this um, from an indigenous scope. And uh, I'm always very thankful when um, sitting beside Diane and hear her. I want to turn to my last segment and I'm cautious of time and I'm going to yeah, ask no. you a very important question. We talked about the issues. We talked about what the things are going sort of sideways for the school district, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about what they get right. In your opinion, what are the achievements that you point to when you look at your school division and say, you know what, we do have growth issues. We do have resource issues, but this is what we get right for you. Mm -hmm. What does the school division get right? And what does the board get right? Yeah, and just kind of just to bounce off uh, kind of what I was talk talking about before, I'm, I'm very, very happy and um, always so proud to talk about uh, the School District 73's relationship with its First Nation um, partners in the district. Because we are such a big district, I believe we have nine First Nation uh, reservations based in our school district and we are one of the one of the only actual school boards in bc that has a um uh, i think it's called a it's an agreement of a learning agreement with these first nations um which outlines you know an actual agreement between the school district and the first nations and what we want to see achieved with the students and what we um want those kids to be able to do and get those opportunities. And I'm very proud to uh, see all these strong relationships that we have with, um, especially the local First Nations here in Kamloops, the Kamloops. And um, as I think these things are very, very important. And, and um, I think even the previous board did a very good job of, you know, making sure these, uh, the First Nation voices and the First Nations um, learning strategic and all that stuff is, you know, because it's been, not in any of the previous year like back in the day like it was just completely turned off they were told to you know get rid of their culture and you know yeah. you're forced to go to residential schools and um i tell people you know we're very very far away from reconciliation and we're just on step number one and um i'm very happy to see the steps that our school district's taken and um and i hope to continue these you hope to continue that that's great so my last question for you is a kind of a loaded question because maybe in three years time, I might call you up and say, Hey, Joe, remember when we chatted back in 2013 and we had this conversation, you're going to say, yes. What do you, what do you hope to accomplish in the next three years? So if you decide three years from now, I enjoyed my time. I'm moving on to the, my next journey. What would you hope to accomplish in this term to set the school board and the school district up for the future? Uh, and, and uh, again, a couple of things come to mind. What what does Joe Kang want done before <laughs> his time? And again, uh, I'm already very thankful in the one year I've 
been on like we've been able to announce a new school and have all these things but you know one little thing that kind of really always I really hope to see done is uh because it's in my community in my area of uh Kamloops is a is a school up near Bachelor Heights element or up in Bachelor Heights it's a part of Kamloops that has been needing an elementary school since 1980 <laughs> and you know just haven't been I've grown up in that area and still have family and friends in that area now that are constantly just asking me, when is the school going to get done? When is the school going to get done? And and that's something that I would love to see happen in my three years remaining. And and I'm not saying the actual school built and all good to go, but uh, I want a game plan set up for bachelor elementary second or elementary school would be my number one, you know, personal goal on the school board level. I would love to see it. And I know everyone at the school board level wants to see it all this that's it's always on our yearly um yearly list of wants to the province and but i think i think it's just been dragged on for so many years uh the residents deserve something up in there and um you know having my name behind that would be would be awesome joe i want to thank you so much i i i I, I I never know what to expect when I sit down and have interviews with amazing people like yourself across Canada. And I, I, I get a sense that you're in it for the right reason. So thank you for serving your school board and thank you for stepping up. It is truly the forgotten level of government that we don't often talk about, but let's change that. Let's make a national conversation right here, right now. Chris and Joe started it and we're going to make school boards matter again. So thank you so much for being part of the show and being the inaugural guest on School Board Chronicles. Yeah, no, and thank you, Chris. Like, um, before I even came across your podcast, like I, you know, thought I was just a local government nerd, but no one, <laughs> no one cared about local government. But um, just watching your episodes and connecting with other people, uh, it's and the youth is very important. I think this is um having like a channel like your podcast. I know when this comes out, I'll be sharing it all over, and um, it's. It's something that's very important, and I want to thank you for your work as well. And that concludes this episode of School Board Chronicles. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this episode today. And as we bid farewell, let's carry the torch of knowledge and empathy, advocating for a more inclusive and empowering educational environment that nurtures the potential of every young mind. Remember, education is not just a stepping stone. It is the foundation upon which our collective future stands. Join us next time as we continue our exploration of the diverse voices shaping the educational landscapes across Canada. Keep the spirit of curiosity alive. And remember, the power to transform lies within each and every single one of us. Until next time, class is dismissed. <laughs>